Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Johnny deceives Paulina about Chanel's vanishing at the clinic, Sarah visited Paulina in her separation room. With a moan, Paulina noticed that she missed her loved ones. Sarah inspected Paulina. When it's protected to deliver you, we will, Sarah said. No foreseeable endgame, Paulina murmured. Sarah guided Paulina to show restraint. Sarah and Paulina discussed Johnny and Chanel's outing to the Horton Lodge. In spite of the fact that I don't feel that the blizzard was the thing they were expecting, Sarah said. Paulina laughed. At the point when Sarah kidded about losing power, Paulina's grin vanished. Sarah guaranteed Paulina that the lodge had a lot of kindling and covers to remain warm. I'm certain they will be okay, Sarah focused. While Sarah dealt with her tablet, Paulina checked out at a record of E.J.'s public interview on her PC. This isn't the manner in which you apologize to an unfairly denounced teen kid. Paulina shouted. Sarah advised Paulina to take care of the work in light of the fact that Paulina's pulse was high. Think cheerful contemplations, Sarah energized Paulina. At Tripp's loft, Harris assisted Ava with completing the process of pressing and planning to move in with him. I simply don't need, Tripp and Wendy, trapped in the line of fire again now that Clyde's still in my hair, Ava said. With a moan, Ava noticed that Clyde's voice had caused her hair to stand on end. I've been attempting to follow this area. He hasn't left any path, Harris said. Harris contended that Clyde had misjudged him and Ava. I'm the person who will deal with his butt, Harris said. As far as you might be concerned, equity is putting Clyde in the slammer. In any case, as far as I might be concerned, it looks somewhat changed, Ava said. Ava educated Harris regarding when she had taken steps to cut Clyde's throat. Harris said he wouldn't allow Clyde to hurt Trip or Ava once more. Or you. I like you better alive, Ava said. Ava grumbled about the dark book. I don't have the foggiest idea where to start searching for it, Ava said. Harris proposed that they work on an arrangement for a coordinated inquiry of the bistro. I'm simply happy I'm not doing this by itself, Ava said. What's more, I'm simply happy you educated me concerning Clyde's summon right this time. Much obliged to you for confiding in me, Harris said. Harris contended that they had a shot at catching Clyde once they tracked down the dark book. In the town square, Nicole censured EJ for his indifferent general acknowledgement. You didn't specify Tate or his family, Nicole snapped. I did, not long before you showed up, EJ countered. Nicole told EJ that she was disheartened that E.J.'s conciliatory sentiment had not been authentic. I did precisely very thing I said I would do. No more, no less, EJ contended. You need to cover this, isn't that right? Is it safe to say that you are even heartbroken that you secured Tate? Or on the other hand, would you say you are recently humiliated? Nicole inquired. EJ made sense of that he was excessively occupied with his responsibility to take care of something else. Nicole got some information about Stefan's hearing. The appointed authority said that they will keep the supplication arrangement in mind, and that implies I have no clue yet assuming the court will acknowledge or dismiss the arrangement, EJ said. With a brief gesture, EJ contended that he expected to return to work and possessed no more energy for the press. Prior to EJ could leave, Chad and Xander impeded E.J.'s exit. You're unimaginable. Beginning a public interview right on time to keep away from the press, Xander said. It's anything but a decent look, D.A. Demera, Chad added. Xander and Chad requested to ask EJ questions as individuals from people in general. EJ moaned and collapsed his arms protectively. Did you apologize to Tate and his folks? Xander inquired. EJ affirmed that he had apologized and that the family had been available. The matter is settled, EJ said. While Xander kept on addressing EJ about the public interview, Chad strolled over to Nicole. How could he begin the question and answer session early? He didn't need the press here? Chad inquired. I'm truly not keen on discussing this, Nicole said. After a second, Chad got some information about Holly. 
Nicole said Holly was getting along admirably and back at school. How have you been holding up? Chad inquired. Nicole conceded that she didn't have the foggiest idea how to manage herself since she as of now not expected to really focus on Holly. I thought I'd be raising my son, Nicole said. With a miserable grin, Nicole noticed that God had different designs for her. I simply don't have the foggiest idea what they are yet, Nicole conceded. Across the square, Xander asked EJ about the examination concerning who had shot Harris. EJ affirmed that the examination was continuous. We will keep you notified about any turns of events, EJ said. Xander spotted Harris strolling by with Ava, and Xander shouted to Harris to get some information about any advancements in the shooting. Is your specialization any nearer to tracking down the genuine shooter? Xander inquired. Harris coordinated Xander to circle back to the police magistrate. All things considered, what might be said about Clyde Weston? Xander asked EJ we've started a cross-country manhunt for Clyde Weston and his associate, EJ said. EJ guaranteed Xander that all leads would be examined. Awkward, Ava murmured to Harris about getting some espresso. EJ watched Ava leave. After Ava and Harris snatched two cups of espresso, they remained by the Salem Motel. Ava apologized to Harris about having been barbecued by Xander. Can't fault him. He needs to realize who set him up, and my shooter is his connect to finding out, Harris said. At the point when Ava apologized as far as concerns her, Harris let Ava know that he was happy he had decided to safeguard her. Stefan's an insufferable punk, however he was influenced quite a bit by as were you, Harris said. A.M., Ava adjusted. Not for a really long time, Harris said. Chad addressed EJ on the record about the jail time suggested by the lead prosecutor's office for Stefan's supplication bargain. Thinking of you as folks are family, any nepotism or irreconcilable situation would be extremely fascinating for our perusers, Chad said. But, you are right here, addressing me. Isn't that an irreconcilable situation, younger sibling? EJ countered. EJ informed Chad that there had been a conference, yet the appointed authority had not arrived at a choice. EJ said he accepted that Stefan would be given a simply sentence for his job in the medication exchange. Stefan hindered to report that he had gotten equity. Across the square, Harris and Ava traded a look. The appointed authority kept the law, consented to time served, and I'm a liberated person, Stefan said. EJ finished the public interview. Did you advocate for your sibling's delivery? Xander yelled as EJ ran out of the square. Chad recommended that they converse with Stefan all things being equal. Do you really want me? There's some place I should be, Xander said. With a shake of his head, Chad told Xander he could deal with the meeting with Stefan. Xander conceded that his principal inspiration to go to the public interview had been to address EJ about who had set Xander up for endeavored murder. Doesn't appear to be extremely keen on figuring out who was behind it, Xander mumbled. As Xander left, he squinted his eyes at Stefan. Look up with you up some other time, mate, Xander snarled. At the edge of the square, Harris and Ava caught EJ you permitted Stefan to go free? How is it that you could be so wild? Harris inquired. Me? You concealed the ID of your own shooter to cover for this dangerous snake, EJ countered as he motioned at Ava. Ava got some information about Susan. EJ glared. 